Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. As many of you know, I've created a simple Excel spreadsheet called the Canadian Drone Pilot Logbook. There's a link to this logbook in the description below the video. What the Drone Pilot Logbook is, is a simple way for drone flyers to meet all of the, well, let's say procedural requirements of the 2019 Canadian RPAS regulations. Things like checklists, having your drone registration number and pilot certification number handy and keeping maintenance logs, things like that. I've had a number of people ask me questions about the logbook, so what I've done is put together this short video to show what's in the logbook, how to use it, and how to customize it to your own needs. Let's dive in. All right, so here's the, the uh, Canadian Drone Pilot logbook. Um, I'm going to assume that you're fairly familiar with Microsoft Excel uh, spreadsheets, but just as a, you know, in case you're a complete novice, um, a spreadsheet is essentially a piece of software that has rows and columns in it. Um, they, the columns have letters at the top, A, B, C, and so forth, and the rows have, have numbers. Um, and you can type things in the various cells, the things in the, at the intersections of the rows and columns are called cells. You can type stuff in there and you can do all sorts of fancy stuff, of course, but um, for this purpose, it's it's really just text. There's nothing else in there. There's no macros. There's no adding and subtracting, anything like that, all of which you can do with a spreadsheet. But a spreadsheet's a handy way to keep things neatly organized as well. And that's why I chose this platform for doing this. Um, the other thing about a spreadsheet is that you can have different tabs. The tabs are these things along the bottom here, and it allows you basically to have multiple spreadsheets all in one neat package. So you can see as you click on the tabs, you can navigate your way from one piece of information to another. So the, the first tab that I have here is called the instructions. I guess what's in there, instructions. Much like I'm going to talk to you uh, in this video, but it is there as a reminder. So the, let, let's walk through some of these tabs. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I'll, uh, I'll walk through the key ones. Um, the ident identification tab is intended as a place where you can keep all of your personal uh, pilot information and aircraft information all in one spot. So your name and address, phone number, email kind of stuff. Um, information about your uh, certification level. There's three levels of certification, basic operations and advanced operations and flight reviewers. I thought, well, hey, why not have flight reviewer uh, in here as well. So you can put your exam past date, your certificate, um, uh, the date your certificate was issued, the certificate number. You're expected to have this at, at hand at any point. If you were to be accosted, uh, you, you can uh, show them that you have a certificate and that would be your the number. Um, the date of your flight review, which isn't applicable for basic ops, but it is for advanced ops and for the flight reviewer. And also recency activities. This would be things like additional training that you've taken um, and things, things of that nature. Uh, Transport Canada hasn't been very specific about what they consider recency activity, but I gave you a few rows here to keep track of at least training. And similarly, your aircraft information you would keep down here in terms of um, uh, the model and description, like a DJI Mavic 2 Pro, for example. Um, I do this, this column here called aircraft is intended to be a, just a shorthand. So if you wanted just to, uh, ha in the aircraft log or the flight log, you didn't, didn't want to say Mavic 2 Pro all the time. Uh, you could just type Navic, Mavic here, and that would be short for your Mavic 2 Pro. And uh, you would put your registration number here, the number that you would stick on your drone, purchase date. If it is approved for ops, you can indicate that here. And you can have a URL link to your operating manual, and you can stick that in this cell over here. Now, it, this isn't uh, a regulatory requirement, but I also put a place in here for emergency contact numbers. So that, well, 911, your spouse, I thought that would be a good one to have in here. Um, the general aviation emergency number, the 1877 number. Uh, this is a number that you're intended to use if there is literally, this is the, the words in the car, if there is an imminent and immediate threat to aviation and public safety. So. If your drone's on a flyaway and you don't know who else to call, call these guys. Um, I also left some room, of course, for additional numbers. 
you know, if you're always flying in the same area, for example, you might want to put the numbers of the local airports that you are anywhere near. Um, you might want to put the fire department in there or something like that. Well, I guess that would be covered by 911. But any other emergency numbers that even remotely you might need, this might be a handy place to keep them. Okay, so this is the, the pilot and, identific and aircraft identification tab. The, the next tab is actually the, the key tab, and that is your flight log. So this is, would be where you keep the uh, track, track all of your flights. So the date, the aircraft, this is where you would just type Mavic, the location where you're flying, uh, additional crew that you have on board, like a visual observer, for example, the flight time. I think keeping it in minutes is sufficient. This is what manned aircraft do. Uh, I would round it up to the closest, uh, the, the next minute. Um, the number of flights, if you, uh, if on a particular day you did three flights or something, five slight flights in the same area, then it would be sensible just to put one, one record here with the number of flights. And you can put a comment here about any incidents or um, something that happened during your flight that you might want to record. All right. So the idea is you you literally just type it in. So uh, April, uh, whatever it is today, 15th, uh, the aircraft would be the abbreviation that I put on the other side. Uh, location, uh, you probably want to put exactly where you are, but uh, I, I'm my, my location where I normally fly is near Tamworth. Additional uh, flight crew, I, maybe I didn't have any. Flight time, you would record this afterwards, say two minutes, and it was one flight, and uh, uh, saw a bear, whatever. Okay, and you would just type this in, or by the way, these things are designed so that they can be easily printed off, and you can keep a paper log if that is more your style, and that's more convenient for you, you can do that. One of the other things that you're required to log is uh, any uh, maintenance activity that you take on your aircraft. Things like, uh, you know, if you're, if you're uh, perhaps your uh, prop broke, uh, then you could indicate that you replace the prop. You could indicate the supplier and part number uh, of that prop. And if there were any instructions that needed, needed to be followed uh, to do that, you could list them off here and have any comments. Again, this is a regulatory requirement to keep a log of all of your your maintenance activities on your aircraft. Um, I'd, I'd say propeller changing is the lowest level of maintenance you'd probably ever be expected to track. Um, you know, if you brushed dust off of one of the arms, uh, I don't think that counts. Um, if you have to take your drone in to have the gimbal uh, repaired on the camera, I would say that that certainly counts or if a motor needed to be replaced or something like that. This is where you would track that kind of information. And if there was, if you're flying a drone that's uh, on the advanced operations permitted list, the uh, uh, manufacturer of those drones are expected to keep track of the, their, the customers like you. And uh, if there are any mandatory instructions such as you must put uh, upload to this firmware layer uh, level by uh, you know, January the 3rd, you could indicate that you did upgrade your firmware on January the 1st or something. Um, and by the way, I would put firmware upgrades on here as well if you can. I think that's a, a particularly important one to, to keep track of. The next few, uh, or next two tabs on here are checklists. Uh, both of them are pre-flight checklists. The uh, first one is for basic operations. The other one is for advanced operations. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but essentially the format here is, uh, I, I have a, a checklist, You have there's a little spot over here where you can uh, put a little X or, or whatever you choose to put in that mark to indicate uh, to indicate that you've gone through the checklist. At the beginning of each operation of this, using the checklist, you would just clear all of the, uh, the things out of those boxes so that you could start new and fresh. All right, so there's a advanced operations one. You're also required to have procedures for how to take off, how to land, and, uh, and emergency procedures. So this is an example of the takeoff and launch procedure. Um, it's fairly simple. Um, and, uh, and of course it would depend 
a lot on what kind of uh, drone you're flying uh, to determine exactly what sorts of steps might make sense. Uh, so for example, activating the drone control unit and display unit. If the display unit is built into the control unit, obviously you don't have to activate two separate things. And again, I'll show you how to update these things in a minute. So there's a landing procedure, emergency procedures, again, fairly generic, um, you know, because given that it's an emergency, it's kind of hard to predict in advance uh, what is appropriate to, to take care of. But I have put in uh, all of the examples that they used in the uh, Transport Canada used in their regulations. And as reminders, I've put in the key rules for basic operations and advanced operations, as well as the definition of, of SFOCs um, or, or situations where you need an SFOC as reminders. And these are things that are directly in my videos that you might uh, recognize. And I've just put them in this sort of checklisty kind of format because I think that's uh, quite a handy way to do it. All right, so that's what's in the logbook. So the next uh, thing is how would you use it? I, I kind of indicated here in the flight log what you would do. You would type in the, um, uh, the, the flights as you were using them. You would, you would uh, maintain uh, your, your information about uh, maintenance activities by typing into the fields here. Um, on the checklist, as I said, you'd put, uh, say, an X as you're going through and noting each of these items and at the end of your uh, or, or at the beginning of a new flight you would simply select all of those fields and if you right click on a, on the mouse you can clear the contents all right so fairly simple to do that uh, so that's the same sort of thing that you would do on all of these checklists if you wanted and, uh, and again if you were to print these off all you need to do is have a little uh, pencil and you just put a tick mark in each of these checklist locations and you can maintain these uh, these checklists as long as you wish um, the the main ones that you want to keep uh, for an extended period of time are the flight logs and the maintenance logs those are uh, regulatory requirements to keep those um, and I'm sorry I can't remember at this instant but it's I think it's two years for each of those one of them might be only one year um, all right so that's how to use these um, uh, these various tabs the last thing is, how do I change them? So let's um, let's uh, take one of these things and customize it for my particular use. So let's look at the pre-flight checklist. I've got a thing here about being away from airports and not in controlled airspace. But suppose you're flying in a known uh, UFO sighting zone and you don't want to be flying when there's UFOs in the air. I'm sorry for the ludicrous example, but just as an example of something you might want to add in, all you do is you right click on the row here over here. And so I'm right clicking, you hit the word insert and a new row materializes in here. And uh, you just type in whatever you want in your checklist. So uh, check for UFOs in visual range. Um, and that's that's all you'd have to do you can type as much or as little as you think is appropriate and then just renumber these things like literally putting a three here and a four and a five and a six and, and just renumber them if, if it makes sense and similarly you can delete something that makes no sense to you for example um, well all of these make sense to me but may, maybe if uh, there is a check for UFOs in your visual range and you don't like that anymore again you you select the row by clicking it in the on the uh, on the row number over here and hit the right hand right mouse button and delete and it's gone all right fairly simple to do that um, similarly you can uh, if you want to change the text in here it says, so it says check nav canada notam uh, or notam site uh, maybe you want to put the exact URL for that right into this checkbox here. So all you do is you select that spot, you double click, and your cursor is flashing, and uh, you can type the HTTP colon slash slash whatever it is into that uh, into that cell. And up here, by the way, you can also see and you can edit up in the in this top bar up here. And if you like what you want, you hit check box check mark. Uh, if you don't like it, you hit the X and it takes it away again. 
All right, and when you're done uh, making any, any edits like that, um, sorry, I've zoomed in a little bit, but up in the top there, there's a save button and you can save the file as uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, your, your own checklist file or whatever. All right, so there's an overview of the Canadian Drone Pilot Logbook, uh, what's in it, how to use it, and how to customize it. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to purchase a soft copy of the Canadian Drone Pilot Logbook, please follow the link in the description below. Thank you for your support. I hope you found this video useful. Please like and comment below the video, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching.